Hallelujah. Good evening. Welcome to our Saturday service. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Who knows the name of Jesus? That there is power. That he can do anything, even the impossible. And he loves you so much. Hallelujah. Let's sing about Jesus. To 
Lord God, from every trouble, from every sickness, from every weakness, from every darkness, hallelujah. I just want to praise you, Lord, all the days of our lives, Lord. It's Jesus, it's Jesus. Captivator of searching hearts, this Jesus, this Jesus, and mender of a million shattered parts, this Jesus, relentless. Oh, this Jesus, this Jesus, so wonderful, so wonderful, so beautiful, so kind and lovely, isn't he? Isn't he beyond compare? Treasures rich and rare, marvelous and holy. Isn't he? Isn't he? Giver, 
giver of the grace that none could earn. This Jesus, the extravagant, keeper of his promise and his word, such goodness, such faithfulness. So wonderful. So wonderful, so beautiful, so kind and lovely, isn't he, isn't he, beyond compare, with treasures rich and rare, marvelous and holy, isn't he, he's wonderful. So wonderful, so beautiful, so kind and lovely, isn't he, isn't he, beyond compare, with treasures rich and rare, and marvelous and holy, isn't he, isn't he. All honor, power, all blessing, and you alone be honored than the door, and you alone be glorified and praised, and you alone be reign forevermore, and you alone. The name above all names, you alone, and you alone be honored and adored, and you alone be glorified and praised, and you alone will reign forevermore, and you alone by the name above. is for you, all for your glory and the honor and your fame. This is for you, this is for you, all for your glory and the wonder of your name. This is for you, this is for you. This is for you, all for your glory and your honor and your fame. Lord, this is for you, 
Jesus, this is for you. All for your glory and the wonder of your name. So wonderful. So wonderful. So beautiful. So kind and loving. Isn't he? Isn't he? Compare with treasures rich and rare and marvelous and holy, isn't he? Isn't he so wonderful? So wonderful, so beautiful, so kind and lovely, isn't he? Isn't he? Beyond compare, the treasures rich and rare, marvelous and holy, isn't he, isn't he? Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord God. And we just thank you so much for sending Jesus. He is marvelous. He is wonderful. He's holy, Father. We thank you so much for sending him to be our Savior. We thank you, Father, for the fulfillment of all the promises him coming means, Father. It meant for all mankind, and we thank you for that, Father. And I thank you for tonight. I thank you that um, as pastor preaches the word, that it goes deep into our hearts, that we're receptive to receive it, Father. We thank you for that. We thank you that this is a blessed time together. We just honor you and we glorify you. And we thank you just for allowing us to just come together, gather in your name, praise you, Father. We just thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. Welcome, everybody. We're so glad that you're here. And um, I just have a few announcements. First of all, we're here every Saturday at 5 p.m. So if you can join us, please do. And we're also here on Wednesdays. So you can come in the middle of the week and get fed the word of God. Um, so I encourage you to come to that too. And then um, the first Wednesday of every month, we have praise and worship. So mark that on your calendar and make sure you come for that too. And if you haven't been able to come, Go back on YouTube and listen to past praise and worship services, listen to past messages. I know you'll be blessed. So also we have Kids Church on Wednesdays um, from uh, three and a half through sixth grade. We also have our Jesus Pieces, which is our youth group. So if you have kids in any of those age groups or you know someone, bring them Bring them and we'll feed them the word of God. And we also have the men's meeting coming up this Friday, August 26th. We also have prayer two times a week, one's in person, that's at 10 a.m. on Fridays, and then we have Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Zoom, and you can get that information on the website. But we also now have our prayer requests and praise reports back in action. So um, if you're here, you can go ahead and fill it out and also tell us what, what Bible verse you're standing on, what promise are you standing on that you want people to agree with you on. Also, it's on the website. So if you go to our homepage, it's up at the top. It says prayer request. Um, you can put that in and we'll get that to all of our prayer warriors and um, they'll be agreeing with you. So take advantage of that. And then we also want to hear your praise reports. So you can put that on this too. So right now I'd like to welcome Gary up. So get ready to receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I used to be her wonderful, handsome and then she said, can I just introduce you as Gary? And I said, if you want. And I guess she wants. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. He's our rescuer. Uh, I don't want to get emotional about it, but I didn't grow up in the church. Praise the Lord. He was my rescuer. <laughs> he rescued me. He rescued me from a life that, of, <laughs> I like that, thank you, of misery. 
I thought it was the good old days, but it wasn't. The good old days are being saved. BC, or I mean, uh, <laughs> BC. Those were BC days before Christ. Those were the bad old days. I'm living in the good old days. Hallelujah. God is good. Um, I'm going to read a scripture. We're going to receive the offering. And I'm going to read a scripture. And um, I just want to say it's in sync. It's in sync. We're, I'm going to ask you in just a minute to put up the the chorus and the bridge of that last song. But um, Psalm 96, it says in verse 4, For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. And then look at verse 8. It says, Give unto the Lord all the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. If you could put up the, um, the bridge to start with. We talk a lot about honoring the Lord with our substance. Proverbs chapter 3. And it says, and you alone be honored. We just sang. We just sang. You alone be honored. So here we're saying this. You alone be honored and adored. And you alone be glorified and praised. And it says, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. How do you do that? You bring an offering before him and honor him. So we're about to receive the offering. This is a time to honor and adore, glorify and praise. This is a time. If, if you think, oh my gosh, I can't wait till the offering's done and all. You're missing it, man. You're missing it. This is a time when we offer to the Lord and give to him. I remember... I remember times in the hotels. I was I was just a kid coming to the Lord and I had nothing to give him financially. I was broke. I had nothing. And I remember going into the bathroom, into the stall and going, Lord, I want to give you financial offering, but I don't have it. He rescued me. How could I not honor and adore, glorify and praise him with my substance? It's a pleasure to give. It's a pleasure. You're not doing it right if it's drudgery. It's, it's an honor. We're going to give and we're going to honor him. We're going to adore him. We're going to glorify and we're going to praise with our offerings. Amen. Father, we bring them before you. And we thank you. <laughs> You're a good God. We say that all the time. You're a good God. And it's the truth. You rescued us. You blessed us, and we honor you, and we adore you as we sang, and now we do. We worship you. We give unto you, Father, the glory do your name. We bring an offering before you. You are so good. We love you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. God is sacred. God is good. Amen. The offering is really a sacred time. It's a time where we can uh, reach out to God and let him know we trust him and we uh, believe in him. I believe uh, totally that God wants to prosper us and to be in health even as our soul prospers. I believe that as we give, it's given back to us, good measure, shaken down, running over. 
Uh, I believe that God wants to bless us in the same manner in which, we, in which we bless. And I believe God wants his people, especially in the times to come, as we get closer and closer to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's a whole lot of work to do in the kingdom. So God wants us to catch the giving and receiving part and to give and to receive so we can give more and really bring people into the kingdom of God. I believe uh, that's how we honor God. We honor him with our lives. We honor him with our thoughts. We honor him with our relationships. And yes, we honor him with our finances, our tithes, or our offerings, or our giving, however you want to look at it. God is good. Amen. Yeah. It is a sacred time. And Gary, I've been there myself, my wife and I, trying to figure out when we first got saved. How can you give? What can you give? We don't have anything to give. And uh, sometimes I wish I could take an apple out of the refrigerator and brought the church and put it in the offering bucket because that's about all I had, you know. But, but God is good. Amen. God wants to bless you. The world, the world we live in today, there's a lot of sadness. There's a lot of grieving and fighting and bickering. Unfortunately, suicide rates are up in all ages, not just one age. Seniors, middle age, young kids and children are trying to take their own lives. Couples have actually taken their lives together, given up on life itself saying life on the other side must be better, yet they don't know what life is. Life has been to some a very sad thing in the last couple of years, and some keep predicting it's going to get worse and worse. And because of that, there's this sadness in our country today. And if, you, if you're part of that, I want to encourage you today, because we're going through a series right now, and the series we're going to have today is The Search for Happiness. The search for happiness. A long time ago, I used to teach this, and, and several people did. I probably picked it up from them, and that is, and it's the truth. A lot of times, happiness is dependent upon happenings around you. So you shouldn't uh, look for happiness. You should look for joy. The joy of the Lord should be the strength, should be your strength, and that's true. But I believe God wants also for us to be happy. So we're going to go on a search for happiness uh, I'll say this, in the search for happiness, we find that happiness can be very elusive. Happiness can be something that's hard to obtain or hard to get hold of. We all want to be happy. Anyone that's ever been asked, Do you, would you like to be happy? The answer is yes. Uh, without a question, without a doubt, people always answer that question. Of course they would, they would like to. But we have been given the impression in our world in America, in society, and even it's going around the world, that happiness really depends on the abundance of material things and popularity. If you have the abundance of material things or if you have popularity, then certainly you're going to be happy. Uh, we think things like this because we've been brainwashed to think it that if we had wealth, if we had peace, if we had comfort, if we had popularity, then, of course, we would be happy. In the uh, 1980s, there was a man by the name of Johnny Lee. Johnny Lee sang a song. He said, uh, looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love in all the wrong places. And in that song, he talks about he, he went here and he went there and went there and went here looking for love, and he would never find it. And finally, he found love. Well, I would like to put it to society. I'd like to put it to you and I. Have we been looking for happiness in all the wrong places? Have we bought in on the fact that, you know, uh, happiness comes when you have the abundance of things, material things in your lives, or you have popularity? Have we been thinking that's where happiness is, and are we looking for happiness in all the wrong places? Oh, I went to history, and I wanted to go through history and read some facts from history that might answer that question. Is there happiness in the abundance of material things and popularity? I went back to a man by the name of Howard Hughes. So, several of you will remember Howard Hughes, either by name, reputation. Maybe you were around when he was around. Maybe you've read about him since he's been gone. But Howard Hughes, at the time that he lived, was one of the wealthiest men in all the world. In fact, some said he was the wealthiest. Some said he was the second wealthiest man of his time. If you figured out how much money he'd be worth today, equivalent to what he was then, uh, when he died, he was worth $10 billion. Uh, last 10 years of his life was anything but happy. He was a recluse. He cut himself off. He was not happy. And when he died, he did not have a wife. He did not have children to mourn his death. His wealth and all the popularity and all the wealth that he had only bought him loneliness, not happiness. 
A history continues, though, as I went back to try to find the answer to uh, where can we find happiness and is our society right that happiness is, is, is the abundance of material things and happiness dependent upon popularity? Just recently, there was a movie that was out, the wealthiest or the richest man on the earth in the world, and it was about John Paul Getty. John Paul Getty was a oil tycoon. He was worth billions and billions of dollars. Um, in fact, equivalent to today's dollars, he would have been worth at his death $20 billion. Um, his private life, though, here he had all this popularity. People knew about him and, and was, wow, he's, he's got a lot of money. I wish I was like him, was unhappy. He'd been married and divorced one, two, three, four, five different times. His youngest son died of pneumonia. His eldest son died of alcoholism. Uh, the, the, the truth is, in the abundance of all this he had, he was not happy. You can have all this stuff. You can possess all this money and all this popularity and not be happy. If the abundance of material things and popularity would make you happy, certainly Howard Hughes and John Paul Getty would have been happy individuals. These two were billionaires. They had it made. But I went back and I said, I want history to go on. Those are two old examples. There's some other examples that are a little, kind of old, but some of these people you will know. John Belushi. Some of you remember John Belushi. is a comedian. He starred in, you know, the, the uh, Blues Brothers. He was in Saturday Night Live, and he had other movies that he had. He died in 1982 at the age of 33. He was looking for something, and he overdosed and died. In 2020, his estate was valued at $20 million or $50 million. River Phoenix, another person who was popular in 1993, he died at the age of 23. He started in movies like Stand By Me. He also overdosed, looking for something else, and he died with $5 million in his possession. Um, is happiness found in material things and popularity? Chris Farley, some of you remember Chris Farley. He was funny. Uh, in 1997, he died at the age of 33. He was a star on Saturday Night Live and in movies. He also overdosed, looking for something else. He died with $6.5 million in his estate. And then there's Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger in 2008 died at the, tw at year, at, at, I'm sorry, at the age of 28 years of age. He was a star of The Dark Knight, very popular. The coroner who examined his body said his body was full of prescription drugs. And research said that he had just had a recent breakup with a woman who he had had a child with. And then we go back a little further to an icon some of us may know uh, just by seeing a white dress, and that is Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe died in 1962 at the age of 36. She started movies like some like it hot. She was fighting depression, couldn't sleep, and had to take sleeping pills to try to get herself to sleep. She was using drugs, they say. We don't know really how she died. There's rumors that she killed herself in suicide, and I'm sure you've heard the other rumors on, on how she died. But we do know this. She died sad. She had been fighting depression. She was single. She was childless. She died with $800,000 in her account, and yet in today's equivalency to that, it would be $7.7 .7 million. And then the king of rock, Elvis Presley. My wife just wanted to yell when I said that. In 1997, he died at the age of 42 years of age. His estate right now is worth $350 million. When he passed away, he passed away. There was about $5 million there, which was equivalent to $20 million. But now it's $350 million. He used drugs. They say he was depressed. He started using drugs more and more to get up, to get down, to sleep, to, to stay awake. His private nurse in her, her diary, and then later she published a book, wrote this before he had died. She said, the world thinks he has everything, and yet the happiness isn't there. You hear that? Most popular man possibly on the face of the earth. All the money you'd want. And it says, the world thinks he has everything, and yet the happiness isn't there. He died of, died of a heart attack. If the abundance of material things and popularity really brought us happiness, then these celebrities should have been the happiest among all of us on the face of this earth. 
I think history is saying something to us, and that is you're looking for happiness in all the wrong places. So we want to take a real look at, at happiness. We want to take a, a look on where happiness really is. And we want to lay our happiness on, the, on a foundation that God really has given us. Not on a foundation of material things that are here today and gone tomorrow, on popularity that changes from year to year or month to month or century to century. We want to look at uh, uh, where we can have a foundation to build our happiness on. Not on material things, not on popularity, because history makes it very clear that that's not it. We need solutions to our inner problems, so we need a, a better solid foundation because we can make a lot of money we can be very popular but if we don't have those inner things taken care of on the inside of us we'll be trying to find happiness at the end of a needle or a pill that we put on our mouth or something else that we do if we don't find happiness in something that's more substantial that to that something that will help us when our with our inner problems our lives will be empty of any lasting happiness. I've looked through the Word of God, I've studied this hard, and I believe that true happiness is on a foundation of three different components. There's three different components that we'll be looking over uh, this week, next week, and the following week. We're going to look at one this week, another one next week, and the third week we're going to uh, finish up on our search for happiness. We believe there's three components that we can look at in the Bible that tells us how we can have lasting, a good solid happiness in our lives. Point one is simply this, the right kind of purpose is needed. The right kind of purpose is needed. If we're looking for a component that we can find happiness, it's not the material things, it's not popularity, it's the right kind of purpose that is needed. One of the components we need to find true happiness is the right kind of purpose it is needed in our lives. It's important to have the right kind of purpose in our lives. Without the right kind of purpose, without the true purpose, you'll never gonna, you're never going to have true happiness. You'll have partial happiness. You'll have happiness that's here today and gone tomorrow. But we want to look at the purpose. And so the first thing we want to say is we want purpose that lasts. Not purpose that's here today and gone tomorrow. You could put it this way, purpose that's eternal. We need purpose that lasts or purpose that is eternal, not here today and gone tomorrow. We want it forever. E everything, everything you and I do, our, our physical lives, our physical health, our diets, our exercise, we all need to set a, a standard. We all need to try to reach a goal. For material things, you can do the same thing. But we need something that will last. We need something that is eternal to find really true happiness for our whole lives. Uh, you know, there's a thing that says this, uh, if you fail to plan, you're really planning to fail. And that's true in every part of your life. If it's material things or if it's uh, financial things or if it's physical things, if it's relationships, whatever it is, if you plan to fail, you're going to if you fail to plan, you're going to plan to fail. You're going to miss it. So we do know that in every area, you have to have goals. You have to have a purpose. You have to have a reason. We need goals. The truth is, though, having a goal in temporary things or temporal things won't last because temporal things don't last. So if you and I set our happiness on temporal things, when you finally reach that, there's something beyond that, and you know it. There's a gnawingness in our hearts. There's a gnawingness in our stomachs. And we go, something's not right. You know, every temporal goal you set, sooner or later, that thing's going to die. It'll be gone. Solomon, the great wise man of the Bible, you know, he, he asked God, God said, tell me what you'd like. And he said, I'd like wisdom so I can govern these people. And God said, you asked a good thing. And because of that, I'm going to make you a very wealthy man, a very rich man. And if you continue to follow me, you'll live to be old. And, and so Solomon turned out to be the richest man of his time. Very, 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 very rich man. But he also had a lot of knowledge given to him by Almighty God. He looked around and he saw the world. He saw the riches. He saw the buildings that he had built. He saw everything that he had done. And he said, vanity, vanity, it's all vanity because I'm going to die. And all this that I've done is going to amount to nothing. 
We need something that's going to last. We need a purpose that's not just for today. We need a purpose that is eternal or we'll never be happy. Alexander the Great, you know, he's a, he was a Greek, and he, he, uh, he was a young man when he took over the kingdom from his dad. He's actually 20 years old. He took over the kingdom, and he started uh, managing the country, and he won battle after battle after battle until he had the largest empire. Uh, some say even still yet today, he had the largest empire of all time. It ran from Greece all the way over into part of India. But it, when he got all done, conquering all the lands and all that, he sat down, he said, and he wept, and he said, there's no more battles to conquer. They were temporary. But he was looking for something more lasting. And he ended up dying at the age of 32 years of age. The Apostle Paul says it this way, to you and to me. Now listen to what Paul says. It's very interesting what he says. He's talking about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you hear this verse a lot of times talked about on Resurrection Sunday or on Easter. When preachers will look for a verse to minister on, they'll minister on this type of a verse. The Apostle Paul is talking about without the resurrection, we have nothing at all. And part of what he says is here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 19. He says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If only in this life our purpose exists, we are most miserable. We need, an ex we need a purpose that exists beyond this. And he's arguing that, yes, you have that because you'll, you'll be resurrected and you have Christ forever and through all eternity. But he's saying it is true. Anything that's just for this life, Alexander the Great was right. Yeah, he was. Solomon was right. If it's just for today, that's what these celebrities and the billionaires, billionaires found out. They had a gnawingness on the inside of them that their purpose wasn't a lasting thing. They had problems on the inside they needed help with, and they couldn't find the help, though they were very successful. No goal in your life, in any area of your life, is, is not a good thing. But to have a goal that's temporary is not a great thing. You need something beyond that. Let me talk to you about my trip to Dominican Republic. Some in the church actually went with me to the Dominican Republic to deliver food. What we did is we had the food sent over through the program that we, uh, we support, Feed the Hungry. Uh, Lester Summerall Evangelistic uh, Association I had an organization in it called Feed the Hungry, and our church has been tithing into that thing for years and years and years. And so every $10 you give, a dollar goes to Feed the Hungry, which goes to feed hungry people around the world. So when you see a disaster, a Feed the Hungry delivers food out to those places. Some other ministers said, why would you give 10% of your money? Why don't you put it back in your building fund or something like that? It is a building fund. We're building the kingdom of God, and we want to feed hungry people. Amen? So we had... We had a chance, uh, Brother Summerall and the group over there was taking food over to the Dominican. They had done it before. There's a missionary over there. What they'd do is they'd buy the food, they'd send it over there by boat, and then it'd be delivered, and then semis would bring it in, and they'd be on pallets. And what we would do, or others would do, is they'd take the food, and they would deliver it to the different pastors in the Dominican. And then the Dominican in their churches would have this food, and they'd call up and they'd say to their parishioners, Come and get food. You can get some food and we'll bless you. It's a wonderful program, a wonderful way teaching people that, that God supplies and their churches can supply because God supplied. So it was a wonderful experience. Went over there and it was very hot. We sweat a lot. We, we did a lot of work over there. It was a wonderful time. But in so doing, a young man there who worked for the missionary said, I want to take you down to my house. I think I told you this before, but he walked me down to his house and showed me his house that was built out of those wood pallets that had been shipped in. He was so happy about those wood, the, his house. His family was so happy. There's his wife and a couple of kids, and they're, oh, we're so happy. And you look at the house, and nobody in America would be that happy with the place, but they were very happy. They were thrilled. And as I talked to him, I found out that his purpose in life was set on eternity. His purpose in life was set on an eternal God. It wasn't set on the house. It wasn't set on riches. It wasn't set on popularity. His purpose in life was lasting, was eternal. And, and I think I took something away from that, uh, realizing that that's how it should be in our lives. Not that God doesn't want to bless us. I believe he does. Uh, my trip to Mexico, my first trip to Mexico was an interesting trip. 
I was asked by another pastor to go over there and minister because they are having a, a an evangelistic outreach over there. They wanted a couple of pastors to speak. So I was honored to go over there and speak in this building, this church. And the building was okay. It didn't have air conditioning, so it was rather hot. In Mexico, it was really hot at that time. And also the seats. They weren't cushioned seats like these, and some complain about seats over here in America. But they were uh, wood planks put on these barrels, and small barrels, and you would sit on them. And if you moved a little bit, you got a splinter. And uh, so it wasn't all that nice. But all the people were happy. They were thrilled. They were worshiping God and having a, in fact, their worship service, I said, wow, this must be like what it is in heaven. As I talked to the preacher there and I talked to the congregant members there at that church and talked to the other people that come in from other churches, I found out that their mission in life, their purpose in life was an eternal purpose. Their purpose in life was to extend the kingdom of God, to serve the eternal God and to reach people with the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The second trip I did to Mexico is our church here, built a church over there. We sent finances, and, and we built a church over there. And they asked me to come over to dedicate the church, and so I went down to Mexico to dedicate the church. My daughter went with me. We got there. We got to the, the place. It was hot. There's no air conditioning on this, this building. It, it was up on a hill, so all the hot air rises, so we were very warm. There was no windows. The windows hadn't come yet. So there's no windows, and as I was speaking, bugs were trying to hit me while I, was, while I was speaking there. The people were excited. They were thrilled. They were, they were having a good time. And later when I talked to our missionary and I talked to the parishioners there, their whole deal was we're so happy we can do something because our whole goal is an eternal goal, not just finances or popularity, but our eternity in serving God. God is good. Amen? There was a man that I highly esteem and respect. He was a pastor of the largest church in the world, and he wrote this. He said, he'd been around the world 10 times, and he wrote this. He said, my observation, if the accumulation of material possessions brought happiness, then those who live in the developed nations should have been the happiest. Yet as I traveled around, the reverse is often true. Those who purpose the direction of their lives toward materialism, the epitome of temporal goals, seem to be the most miserable of all. It's interesting. He'd been around the world 10 times, went to countries that weren't developed and countries that had all the conveniences. And he said, you would think that countries with all the conveniences, the people there would be the happiest. But yet the reverse was true because those in the other countries, they were more concerned about God and what God was doing. Turn to somebody and say, that's true. It's true. God... God wants us to have an eternal goal of serving him. So we're talking about what is the foundation for true happiness? Not materialism, not popularity. No, it's not that. It's an eternal purpose. And your eternal purpose can be found in Almighty God. Without that, even the most planned and honorable purpose isn't lasting. Even if you have a wonderful purpose, Without it being a lasting purpose and a relationship with an everlasting God, it's not worth anything. Augustine, who was a, a, a priest in the 6th century, wrote this. And I'd like you to listen to these words, please. I don't agree with everything he said, but this, I believe, is of God. It says, Thou hast made us for thyself, and our hearts are rentless or restless until we find our rest in thee. Where do we find rest? In Almighty God. Not in materialism, not in popularity, not in position. What, what he said you find is when you and God have a real purpose. Purpose, have God in your heart. Purpose, serve God. Purpose, give your life to God. Purpose, use your life to bless other people. Purpose, know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and tell other people about that purpose. Know that God put us Christians here on this earth to evangelize this world, to let people know about Jesus Christ. Our purpose is greater than materialism. Our purpose is greater than popularity. Our purpose is eternal. Our purpose is to serve God and to let others know about our eternal God. Amen? Amen. Jesus is God in the flesh. Tell people that. Jesus came to this earth 
to die on the cross. That's our purpose, to tell people that. Jesus came to save mankind. Tell people that. Jesus came to pay the price for our sins. Howard Hughes needed to hear that. John Paul Getty needed to hear that. John Belushi needed to hear that. They all needed to hear that. River Phoenix. They all needed to know the truth. There's something more valuable. And that eternal purpose is serving God. Turn to somebody and say, serve God and you'll be happy. Now, he rose from the dead, Jesus Christ. And when he rose from the dead, he gave you and I the possibility to have happiness. Taking him on as our Savior and then sharing him with others. God is good. Amen. Look about me for a moment. What that is over there is we have a, uh, another church in that part of the building. And that church, sometimes the youth there get excited and uh, they make a little noise. But, but that's okay. We thank God they're a church. It's not a bar. We thank God it's not a drug dealer. We thank God it's nothing like that. There's people over there enjoying God. Amen? Give my hand clap. So purpose, that last is important. And then secondly, purpose with identity is needed. Purpose with identity is needed. Jesus knew his purpose. In John chapter 8 and verse 14, it says this, Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I hear, I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I've come and whether I go, but I cannot tell whence I come and whether I go. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but through me. Jesus knew where he came from. Jesus knew where he was going. And Jesus knew uh, how to get there. Uh, through Jesus Christ, we can be reconciled to God. You can spend your life in happiness knowing where you came from. You can spend your life happy because you know where you're going to. You can spend your life with God. You'll know why you're here. Jesus knew where he came from. Jesus knew why he was here, and Jesus knew where he was going, and Jesus is a happy Jesus. We can know Jesus, and we can know why we're here. We can know where we came from, and we can know where we're going. We, we can have purpose with identity. We can identify with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We can identify with eternity because of Almighty God. We can identify with, with him, and identity is important. You're a child of God. Just say that, I'm a child of God. When, the, when things rise up against you, I'm a child of God. It's a whole lot better to say I'm a child of God that I'm rich. It's a whole lot better than say I'm a child of God that I'm popular. It's a whole, I'm not saying you ought not be rich. It's okay. You can be popular. That's fine with me. But you need to have a longer and a stronger and a better foundation. And one is that you need to identify with Almighty God. Amen. God is good. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 16, it says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. You are identified. Now watch this. Solomon looked around, and he said, Vanity, vanity. Alexander the Great looked around and said, There's no more nations to conquer. Paul said, If in this life is all we have is Jesus here, it is vanity. It is not good, but we don't just have him here. We have a purpose, and we are identified with him. When we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become part of the body of Christ, and Almighty God is our Father. They may have, a billionaires may have all that money, but you're a child of God. Some might have a lot of popularity, but you're a child of God. So when adversity comes your way, I'm identified with God. I'm a child of God. I'm a ch I have a purpose to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's a stronger purpose than any other purpose. That's a stronger purpose. That's a better purpose. That's a stronger and a better purpose. Amen? Amen. And then the last one is simply this. Purpose with power is needed. It, to, to, to have a purpose without the ability to accomplish it would be hard. But God didn't leave us without any power on this earth. He said, I have a purpose for you. I want you to spread the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want you to identify with me as my child. 
but I'm also going to give you power. So you'll have the power when you face satanic forces, you have power over them. When you face uh, dramatic situations, you can pray, you have power over them. He said, I want you to know that yes, yes, without purpose that lasts, purpose by identity, but also purpose with power. You have more power. You have the power of the living God residing on the inside of you. Amen? You have the power of the living God on the inside of you. According to the word of God, it's available to us in Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. It says, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Wouldn't you have loved to walk into the room and been able to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk without all the drugs affecting him with John Belushi? Say, John, I know probably when you were young, maybe you heard these things. And maybe you feel like you have no purpose. You thought it was to get popular and you thought it was to get wealth and now you have both and you feel empty. I have neither of those things, John. But I don't feel empty. Let me talk to you. Let me share Jesus with you. Wouldn't you have loved to have a few moments just to talk to him about Jesus Christ? Say, John, use your popularity for an eternal purpose. Spread Jesus. John, I know you're identified with the Blues Brothers, and it's pretty popular. But you can be identified with Jesus Christ. An eternal, an eternal, an eternal happiness can be yours. And John, I know you're fighting those drugs, but I've got news. That identity, you have power over that. Just whisper in his ear. Talk to him for a few minutes. Talk to River Phoenix. River, I know you have a lot of money. I know you're popular. How about Marilyn Monroe? Marilyn, I know that you're beautiful. Everyone says you are. And all the things they say about you, and I know you've been used, and I know you've been abused. But God never did that. And I know that you're popular and have money, but I have something better for you. Where you don't have to take drugs to find happiness. Receive Jesus. I have something better to offer you. Jesus Christ. A purpose in your life to spread the news. Can you imagine... Marilyn Monroe coming out and say, I've given my heart to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a purpose you'd have. Purpose. Sharing Jesus Christ. Purpose. I, I am identified with Jesus now. I've been with other men, but now I'm with the Savior. What a purpose. And when they try to get her again to suck her back in, she'd say, no, I have the power of God on the inside of me. Elvis Presley was raised going to church. I know I've seen part of that movie or that movie. I saw the movie about Elvis. But when you really watch the history of it, he, he, he was brought up in a Pentecostal church. And he, uh, he actually prayed for his singers that were with him, things like that. As, as way out as he got, he still knew there was something there. Wouldn't you have loved to just had a few moments with him? Maybe it would have done good. Maybe it wouldn't have. Elvis? I know what you're going through. You're taking the drugs. You have all the money. You have all the popularity in the world. And you feel empty. I wish I had all that money. I wish I had all that popularity. Because I could use it for the glory of God. Let me talk to you, Elvis. I know you're raised in church. And now you've lost your purpose. It's not really to sing. It's not really to twist your hips. It's to tell people about Jesus Christ. He lost his bearing. The last days of his life, he called up a pastor from Ohio, and I've heard the pastor talk. And the pastor, uh, Rex Humbart, and Rex Humbart said he got a call from Elvis. Elvis was in Las Vegas. And he went and asked him to come back. He said, Rex, I've lost it. I need help. I'm so trapped. And Rex prayed for him that the thing would break off of him. He had all the money he wanted, 
all the popularity he wanted. But he wasn't happy. My friend, if you think those things would bring you happiness, it would be nice to have money. It would be nice to have popularity, to use it in the right way. The greatest thing is to know God. The greatest thing is to walk over to Dominican Republic and see them, that man saying, I'm so happy. My family's so happy. Oh, we can serve God. And I'm going, where's the plumbing? Where's the electric? We love God so much. We love God. Las Vegas, Dominican Republic. Purpose has to be eternal. Not set on this earth. You'll feel it when you're on top in this world. You'll feel this emptiness. Don't let the devil trick you and tell you you're empty because you don't have all that. You're more full than Howard Hughes, than John Paul Getty, than the celebrities we talked about if you have Jesus Christ. Amen. That's our first lesson on happiness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for you. We thank you that you are our God. We thank you, Father God, that we can be happy because the first foundation of happiness is a purpose. And we have a purpose to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's an eternal purpose. It never stops. We thank you, Father God, that on the other side, you'll be there. We thank you, Father God. We thank you that we have a purpose with identity. We're identified with you through your son, Jesus Christ. We're children of God. And we thank you, Father God, that we have a purpose with power. We can overcome the things that are trying to overcome us. So, Father, I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Now, let me come against the things that are coming against you. I am totally aware of the fact that there are satanic forces in the world today. The Bible even tells us about them. And so when you read the Bible, if you believe the Bible, uh, you know they're there. Now, there's two ways you can look at it. Like, oh, my God, or oh, my God. And so we're going to say, oh, my God is able to do something. Amen? Amen. And he is. Uh, the name of Jesus is above all other names that are named. So if depression, if unhappiness, if those things are coming against you, read this or go through this teaching over and over and learn what the Word says. But then let me say this to you. A prayer can change everything. One prayer can change everything in your life, if you'll believe. Why don't you believe right now that God is more powerful than that thing that's attacking you? That God is more powerful than that thing attacking your emotions or your mind or your body? And let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we have read your word, and your word says that sickness does not come from you. That would mean physical sickness, emotional sickness, mental sickness does not come from you. I've read your word, Heavenly Father, and it says there's principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world. It says that, Father God, your name is above, your son's name is above every name that is named. You said, Father God, that we can cast these things out. And so in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we command the attacks that are coming against your physical an emotional and mental body to cease to stop and be gone in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the name of Jesus and the demonic forces, the forces sent by the devil to mess with you. We come against in the name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names, and we command you to release and leave the body and the minds of those that are here in Jesus' name and those that are listening by YouTube. And we thank you, Father, for total deliverance. Amen and amen. Give God a hand clap, will you please? We laid a lot of foundation. We laid a lot of foundation today on, on this. This was part one. There's part two and part three. Won't have to lay a, quite a, 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 as long of a foundation. We get right into the next two pieces of the foundation, components that we need so we can have this happiness all the time. Amen. Why don't you stand with me if you would, please? God is good, and uh, our, our brother's going to play for us. And he's going to bless us. Go ahead.
rolls up the sleeves When he rolls up the sleeves He ain't just putting on the ritz A god is an awesome god There is thunder in his footsteps And lightning in his fists A god is an awesome god the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked them out of Eden It wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood His return is very close to you You better be believing that our God is an awesome God Our God is an awesome God He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love our God is an awesome God, our God, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. When the sky, when the sky was starless in the void of the night, a God is an awesome God. He spoke into the darkness and created the light. A God is an awesome God. In judgment and wrath, He poured out on Sodom. Mercy and grace He gave us at the cross. I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten that our God is an awesome God. Let's sing. A God is an awesome God. Some God he reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an Praise God, our praise God. God. Thank you, Nathan. God Nathan, Nathan, awesome Nathan. God. Hello. Thank you, Nathan. I'm in the other room, buddy. I know you're looking for me. I haven't gone to heaven yet. I'm still here. Don't look up. I'm in the other room. I came in here because my mother is over here in the other room, and I just wanted her to pray a dismissal prayer. So, Mom, would you please pray for people here? Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this place that we can come to worship whether it's one of the other rooms or it's in the main room, Father. The Spirit of God is in there, and it's preached through the press, preacher at the time we need it. And we thank you for that need. And we ask that every one of us carry what we got out of this sermon home with us, dwell on us, and thank God for it, and repeat it in our minds and in our souls all week long. And let us all meet again when the church gets together. Amen. Amen. You're all dismissed. God bless you.